Meteorologist Jeremy Lawan joins us in the backyard with what we can expect for our holiday week leading up to Thanksgiving. Jeremy. Jack, isn't this such a magical time? It, I'd say Christmas is a magical time. This is like a delicious time. Oh, a delicious time. A deliciously <laughs> magical time. How do we combine the two? I'm just hungry, Jeremy. <laughs> I just want, like, Thanksgiving turkey. Yeah, you I know you it, had your I, dinner quite a while ago. I know. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm looking forward to Thanksgiving. I think it's a magical time. It's the kickoff to the holidays, really. And we have turkey to come. We have all kinds of sweet potatoes and mashed potatoes and asparagus and green beans. I can't wait. Yes, Jack is right. It's a delicious time. But I also find at a magical time and I think that's what makes this video that came in so special. I think it's magical. This is from East Stroudsburg. James is a very loyal viewer along with his partner Ed. We appreciate you sending in this photo, this video rather, from your ring camera of a piebald deer. Do you see that white deer there? That's not a goat. That's not a different type of animal. That is actually a deer, and it's called a piebald deer. It has a genetic mutation that causes white and brown patches in its fur there, and it makes it different from the normal deer, and it's very rare. It, less than 1% to 2% of the deer population actually has this trait, and it's not the same as albinism because the deer actually have normal eye color and nose color, whereas albino deer have d whiter eyes and whiter noses. So really awesome some find here. Thank you, James, for sending in this video. And uh, apparently this deer is known as the neighborhood celebrity. So really cool that we were able to share it here on WNEP. Thanks again for sending this in. All right, from one part in Monroe County to another, this is the live view from our uh, Pocono Municipal Airport camera. You can see the uh, airport beacon shining brightly, but there's no fog to be found, which is good for any planes expecting to land tonight. We had a beautiful sunset, and this was taken by our engineer, Mike. Thank you, Mike, for sending this to me. What a gorgeous sight. I know several of the people in the control room took pictures of this uh, sunset, too, because of how pretty it was, with the golden glow right there along the horizon as we see just some of the last leaves clinging to the trees as we end off November. There's a live view from our rooftop camera. We've got beautiful clear skies overhead. A far cry from where we started today. We were quite cloudy and we held on to the clouds a little longer than we would have liked in northeastern Pennsylvania. 41 is where we're at right now with west southwest winds at 8. We started off pretty chilly in the 20s for Scranton and uh, Mount Pocono in the low 20s. Elmira woke up to the teens today and with the added winds in the afternoon, it felt colder than the thermometer reading. 26 was the wind speed in Scranton at its highest. We had a gust of 30 in Mount Pocono. Now those winds less than 10 for everyone except State College where we have sustained winds at 12. Today's highs rebounded nicely into the 50s for Williamsport and Sealands Grove, but notice how we stuck in the 40s all day in northeastern Pennsylvania as a result of those clouds that lingered for such a large part of the afternoon. Temperatures now in the 30s and 40s with the added winds feeling a little bit cooler, feeling like uh, 37 in Williamsport, feeling like 30 in Coffin Rock, whereas the temperatures are closer to the upper 30s, low 40s right now. So when you don't have uh, winds, your body produces heat and it ends up surrounding your body like a bubble. But when you have winds, it moves that bubble away and you end up feeling colder. That's why the feels like temperature is different from the actual temperature. Your skin reads temperature differently than a thermometer does. We have a few clouds over northeastern PA with some sprinkles and flurries for Wayne County. That'll move out within the hour or so. And then we're tracking our next system gaining shape there in Kansas and it'll bring us a risk for rain on Tuesday evening into Wednesday morning. In addition, we could see some rain showers on Wednesday night, which is when the Times Tower lighting happens. So overnight tonight, mostly clear. Then we see some sun, some clouds rather, as we head closer to sunrise. Those clouds burn off by late morning. We have sunshine for most of the afternoon on Monday. In the evening, we see more clouds filling in ahead of the system. And on Tuesday, those rain showers start in central Pennsylvania by 2 p.m. and continue eastward by 5 or 6 o'clock, seeing widespread rain showers. They remain light in nature, not expecting much accumulations. And then we could see an additional line of showers later on Wednesday, but it looks isolated. I think this one's more widespread what we see on uh, Tuesday. Those rainfall amounts from a few tenths of an inch to maybe a half inch of rainfall. And I want to point this out. It's really important because there, there's a widespread risk for rainfall on Tuesday night, but only an isolated risk for rainfall on Wednesday night. And of course, the Wednesday night forecast is all important as we are lighting the Times Tower at 6 o'clock. So hopefully those showers miss Scranton, but there is a chance. So bring your rain gear just in case. It will be warm in the 50s and even near 60 when the Times Tower gets lit. 
then we crash as the cold front comes through late Wednesday night and a Thursday morning. Jack, we will be cold for Thanksgiving with breezes and even some flurries around. I don't think we'll see accumulations on Thursday or Friday, but those flakes will be flying through the skies, especially further west. Jeremy, winter, spring, summer and fall. We're getting it all in this forecast. Typical NEPA. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> yep.